Hello there, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you this lesson on solving systems of equations using the graphing method. Specifically, in this one, we're going to solve systems by graphing, which is to say figuring out where two lines cross or intersect on a graph. And for real life applications, we're going to figure out where two airplanes' paths will cross. Let's start off with a real life example of a system. Let's say we have two planes leaving different airports with paths given by the equations y equals x minus 1 and y equals negative x plus 3. Is it possible these planes are going to hit each other? And if so, because it definitely looks like these paths are crossing, uh, at what point should they start looking out for each other? So when you have this kind of situation with two lines on the same graph, um, that's what we call a system of equations. And when you're asked to solve a system of equations, there's two ways of thinking about the solution. There is a graphical version of the solution, which is just a point, an x and a y value, where the two lines actually intersect. There's also an algebraic solution, which is a point that makes both equations true when we plug in x and y. Um, so there's crossing on a graph, and there's making both equations true. These are both considered ways of thinking about solutions. The basic idea of solving a system by graphing is pretty straightforward. Um, you have to graph both lines. You have to graph them on the same axes, and you have to read off where they intersect. So pause the video and take a couple minutes to do that with these two equations. All right, let's see how you did. First equation, we have a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of invisible 1 here. So up 1, right 1, draw the line through those. Second one, we have y-intercept of 3. And for our slope, we're going down 1 over 1 and draw that line. So now we just have to figure out where they cross. Um, so they cross over here. Hopefully it's on grid lines that we can easily read. So this will be the point 2, comma 1. And that is our solution to this system of equations. Here's another example. Try this one on your own. Hopefully you put this equation in slope-intercept form first. So we'll subtract 8x and then divide everything by negative 4. That'll be y equals 2x minus 2. Graphing these now. Uh, y-intercept of negative 2, slope of up 2, right 1, draw the line, and this one we have a y-intercept of 2 all the way up here, and we have a slope that's also positive, but this time we're going up 2 and over 3, um, which just so happens to lead us to the intersection point of 3, 4. Try this next one out. Uh, this one is so easy it's hard. You'll see what I mean in a sec. So we have horizontals and vertical lines here. Um, so I always write out hoi vux when I'm dealing with this. This is just an x, so that means it's vertical from vux. Um, so we're going through the x value negative 4. That's over here. This next one is horizontal. It's in hoi. Y is in hoi. Um, so we have a y value of negative 2 that we're going through for that horizontal line. And this point where they meet is, uh, coincidentally, not so coincidentally, negative 4, comma 2. We'll end this with a couple of oddball cases. Pause the video and try these out. So for this one, we need y equals mx plus b form. Subtract the 18x, divide by the 9. So we've got y equals negative 2x plus 3. And graphing these out, we've got y-intercept of 3, slope of negative 2, so down 2 over 1. There's that first line. and Oh, wait a sec. Y-intercept of 3, slope of down 2 over 1. Why? They gave us the very same line in disguise. Um, so if you have one line on top of another, if you have like the same line, then you actually have not one solution, not two, not three, um, an infinite number of solutions because the lines touch everywhere. All right, this next example. Y-intercept of 1, up 1 over 3, and graph that first line. This time we've got y-intercept of negative 2, up 1 over 3, graph that line. These are never going to touch. These are two parallel lines. Um, so if you have two parallel lines, then you end up with no solution. If they never cross, then they don't cross and there's no answer. We're going to wrap up with a helpful technique that you can use if you're not very artistically savvy. Uh, let's say Linus is not very good at drawing straight, accurate lines. The lines he draws while attempting to solve a system appear to intersect at 1, 3. How can he be certain that this is the solution to the system? 
Uh, so pause and take a sec to ponder this one. Maybe look back at what it means to be a solution of a system. So if you look back at our definition, we said a solution algebraically s makes both equations true when you plug in the x and the y value to both equations. Um, so if you want to check to make sure your answer is actually the right answer, you can plug your point into the two equations to see if they come out true. So that's a helpful technique you can use. Until next time, this is Mr. Sutton signing off.